Okay, so we've got our uh, source code downloaded. We see that we've uh, finished downloading all of our material and we have our useless ROM. And uh, this gives me uh, a little bit of pleasure just saying useless ROM. It's, it sounds nice when I say it. So I, I'm, I'm kind of enjoying what we're doing here. But anyway, so uh, we added to our default XML uh, the Apollo uh, app. Right here is where we did that. And so, you know, adding more uh, things that you want to just pick from other ROMs is super easy as far as getting them downloaded. Just by literally adding the line from their uh, manifest, like we saw in the previous videos, uh, just adding lines for project uh, packages or things that you want is, is really simple. But just downloading it doesn't actually make it build. Um, if we were to build this useless ROM right now, it would look, act, and be identical to Lineage OS for CyanogenMod or 13.0 because we haven't specified anything different. Uh, we haven't told it that this Apollo source is now available and needs to be built. So, of course, you know, it put in packages, apps, Apollo right where it was. And if we look at our Android make file, uh, the local package name is a capital A Apollo and we need to tell it somewhere that hey this new package that we've added this needs to be built and we want it to, to do that so what we need to do is take a look here and where that's done you could specify this in a lot of different places you could put it into the device files and things like that but that would actually get kind of messy because everybody would have to add it to the device files typically what you do is you have a vendor file um, almost all uh, device trees actually I think all device trees except for maybe AOSP uh, directly call these vendor files at some point and, and I'm going to go on a limb and say all of them do, even AOSP just may not have an AOSP vendor file. But anyway, so uh, this CM vendor file gets called and then it gets, it gets run. Uh, we can look at an example of that. By looking at the Blocks 2 phone that we just built device Blue Life 1X2 and uh, here we are we're on the Marshmallow branch which is our master branch and in the device make file it says <clears throat> let's see here oh, maybe not there uh, lineage.make file that's probably a little better. There we go. So uh, it is specifying that inherit some common lineage OS stuff. And it says call inherit product vendor CM config common full phone. So if you are making your own custom ROM, completely custom, uh, what you could do is instead of calling vendor CM, you could call vendor, you know, uh, useless ROM config common full phone and then you would uh, you would need to um, let me get back to my thing here you would need to change this vendor file folder to be useless ROM and then put the stuff that you want in it uh, of course in here notice that these configs you'll have to go through and change each one of these configs because they're going to call the inherent product of vendor CM config common full and so what I would recommend doing would be a little bit simpler <clears throat> excuse me what I would recommend that you do in this case uh, would be if you want to keep being able to update with Engine Mod or Lineage OS in this case now or whatever your base ROM is instead of changing their vendor file what you could do is make a new folder and we'll call ours the useless ROM vendor folder right 
And what we'll do is we grab this one, uh, config common full phone, right? So we're going to copy that. And we're going to make our new folder, config. And we'll paste in here common full phone. And this common full phone will still call the vendor CM config common full. So you'll still use the vendor CM portion, but this will be the first stop. And in here, we can add the stuff that we want. So for instance, uh, you know, what all do we want to put in here real quick? So I, I hope this makes sense, what I'm, what I'm saying here. We'll, we'll see it in action here in a minute. Because uh, we'll actually have to download a device tree so we can we can do this. But what we need to change in our device tree, where it says inherit some lineage OS stuff, instead we'll change this to inherit some common useless ROM stuff, and we'll change this to useless ROM. And now it's going to call our config right here, which we're going to add some things to and it's still going to point back to uh, CyanogenMod. Now you could just completely, completely get rid of it. Uh, the CyanogenMod portion or the Lineage OS portion or whatever your base ROM portion is and completely replace it with your own, rename everything in there and uh, and that's good too. Uh, that's a good way to go as well. Um, you know, but this would be one way, like if you just wanted to add on top of what they already have, some of this stuff. Or you can do it completely separate uh, on on your own. So a couple of things to uh, to think about there, different ways that you could go about doing it. The plus side to doing it this way, where we have our own useless ROM with a config, common full phone, and we're going to add, for instance, we're going to add a product packages of Apollo and we save this <clears throat> so now that Apollo package is going to get built every time for every phone and it's still going to go ahead and call the regular CyanogenMod stuff and do the regular CyanogenMod stuff that it needed the plus side to doing it this way is uh, if you are still wanting to uh, utilize CyanogenMod stuff, they're going to keep working on it on, on their side, or Lineage OS, or whatever your base ROM is. They're going to keep working it on their side. They're going to keep updating it, and you can keep downloading their updated material, and you get all the benefit of them and their work without having to rework your folder, uh, if that makes sense. And so that's a, a one possible way to do this. Um, we're actually going to look at completely taking their tree, their uh, vendor tree, and making it ours. And the reason we're going to do it that way is because we're going to change uh, a lot of uh, little things like the the wallpaper background and stuff like that. Okay, but I just wanted to show you that this would be one method of how you could, uh, you know, just make your own vendor folder that just has one file in it where you add a few things and if you need more than one file you can call more files that you make and add you know more little instructions or whatever in there and uh, this for instance we just added this Apollo and it would help if I spelled it right because if you don't spell it right it isn't gonna work we just added this Apollo line, so now it's actually going to build Apollo into our build. Some of those extra packages that we want, anything extra that we downloaded, it'll make sure to build it into your build. So hopefully that makes sense. We're going to actually look at, you know, a complete change of their uh, vendor file to our purposes, but I just wanted to look at uh, how we would do it if we didn't want to change their material at all. We wanted to keep using their material as much as possible. We just wanted to add a little bit on top of it. Then this would be a very viable option of how 
you could uh, just make your own little vendor tree and, and go right along with theirs.